The following software tutorial covers the basic workflow for producing a rhinestone motif template using Roland's Rware Studio. Now the first thing we need to do is launch Rware Studio. And this particular tutorial will assume that we're going to create a template for an EGX350 desktop engraver. To configure the software, we will click on File and Output Device Setup. In the Output Device Setup screen, we can configure our wide format printer for print and cut, which would be our VersaCam. If we have a vinyl cutter GX24 Cam1 servo, we can set that up for cutting textile heat transfers. For the engraving machine, we will set up our EGX350 from the drop-down menu. And for the printer, we can set up a third-party printer for print and cut applications in conjunction with the GX24. Once we've done this, we can click on OK. We'll now create a new file by clicking on File and New, and we'll input our work size. In this example, we're going to use a 12 inch by 9 inch work size and click OK. To view the entire work area on our screen, we can click on View and Fit to Screen. We can now import graphics, draw freehand our design using the toolbar items as well as adding text to our design. In this example, we will create a simple template with a name. So what we will do is select the text icon and type in a name. Once we have the name typed in, we can resize, edit our kerning, and reposition our text anywhere on the screen. Now, for rhinestone applications, typically you want to use a single line font to apply your rhinestones to. Roland Rware Studio comes with a font editor that allows you to convert any true type font into a single line font for applying rhinestones to. To convert a font, you want to click on Edit and Make Stroke to launch the Roland Single Line Font Editor program. Once the program is open, we can click on File and new, and in our base font, we can select our true type font that we want to convert. Once we find the base font, we click OK, and the software will convert the entire character map for that font. Now, in the font, if we need to make any adjustments to the font, we can do so with our node edit tools. So we can go in and clean up the font to our liking. Once we have the library completed, we will click on File and Save. You can leave the default name or you can give it your own custom name and click OK. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and close the program. Once back in Rware Studio, we can select the font, click Format and Properties, and on the drop-down menu, we will scroll up the list. This is where your Roland single line fonts will be listed. Select the newly created font, which is labeled with an RSF icon. In the format window, we can adjust our text height, character spacing. We can align it with the curve, our line spacing. We can adjust the font by height via baseline or descender. We can adjust the width, also our justification. At this point, we've converted our font into a rhinestone pattern. And again, we can go in and resize this text. Once we've resized the text, we can apply our rhinestone pattern to it. To do so, we will open our rhinestone library. This will open up a window on the right-hand side of our screen. At this point, we can select our rhinestone color. In this case, we are going to use transparent. We could select the diameter, and in this example, we will use a SS10 rhinestone. And then for the type, we're going to use hotfix rhinestones. What this does is it narrows our list and makes it easy to select the appropriate stone to use for our design. 
we can select the stone and down below we have our arrange rearrange icon we can specify our gap which is the spacing between stones we can also set the stones up based on feature start point end point or an anchor point we'll use the default settings for now and to apply the rhinestones we simply click the arrange rearrange icon now to modify our design or to clean up design we can release the file we can go in and delete stones from our graphic we can also move stones from our graphic also if we needed to add stones to our file we can simply click and drag from the library and place the stone where we see fit. Once we've made our adjustments, once complete, we're ready to output our file. But before we do, we want to configure the engraving parameters. To do this, we will click on Engrave and Add Remove Tool. What we're going to do is create a new tool. So what we want to do is select one of the preset values. In this case it's the 1.52 millimeter parallel engraving cutter. So we'll select the 1.52 millimeter parallel cutter and click copy. We will have a copy of this driver which allows us to edit this. What we want to do is give it a unique name in this case, I'm going to use the part number of the tool that Roland DGA offers. For the tool type, it will be parallel, it's cemented carbide, and the flute diameter and the length are already pre-configured. So at this point, we can click on parameters. In the parameters window, we want to select the material that we will engrave onto. We will select polyacetal, which is basically standard engraver's plastic. We want to make sure we have the newly created tool selected. And then we want to click on edit. This will allow us to edit our engraving parameters. For an EGX350, we can set the XY speed to 50 millimeters per second. For the Z-speed, we can set it for 30 millimeters per second. And for the cutting in amount, we want to change that to 0 0.03 inches. Once we've set that, we can click on Register, Close, and OK. Now we're ready to engrave the file. To engrave the file, we'll click on the Engrave icon to open up the Engrave window. In the General tab, we want to ensure that we have the proper engraver selected. And we want to ensure the engrave size is correct as well. If not, click on Properties and input the proper size. And for engrave position, we want to set it to the center. Next, we can click on the engrave parameters. In this screen, we want to ensure that we select the tool that we created, as well as the material that we applied the settings to. Once the engraver is configured as per the hardware setup guide, we can click on Apply, click on OK, and once the engraving machine is configured, we can click Yes to output the file. Thank you, and this concludes our tutorial. For additional videos and information, please visit www.rolanddga.com dot com.